Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Anna K. Morris and um, this is day two of a 30 day free coaching videos. Um, it's April 2nd and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching if you watched yesterday too. That was kind of the kickoff call where of course I started reading a children's book and cried. I feel like that was pretty accurate. That was probably the best way to meet me. Um, Jack was actually just sitting on my lap Famous last words, I just told Derek, I was like, I just need 10 minutes to like shoot this video. And he took Jack and the dogs outside. Um, and then Dean is sleeping in the room next to me. So like, I'm pretty sure in about five minutes, Dean will, will smell that I'm doing something <laughs> that I want him to be quiet for. And he will wake up, uh, Dean will be one on April 5th. So um, he's been a little sick. So we've, it's been, uh, it's been crazy. Kids are crazy, man. Like, that's a whole nother. We'll just talk about that, that later because I do want to, I do have a thread that I want to pick up from yesterday. Um, but I won't forget, I do have parenting on the list and specifically like pivoting, right? Parenting teaches you to pivot constantly. But without further ado, I want to talk about the subject um, for today's video because uh, I do like to have a loose plan um, and it's about community. So we touched on it yesterday when I um, read Pete the Cat and the Itsy Bitsy Spider, which is cute because Jack is now totally obsessed with that book and has me reading it multiple times a day. I think I've already read it four times and it's not even noon. Um, but that whole concept of community, and I want to share a story because I love telling stories and I think that it helps things to really land. And also I, I like stories because then I feel like it's not just a theory. It's like something that actually happens. So I will tell them a lot in all of these videos and I will tell them a lot about my own personal life because I practice what I preach. And I remember 15 years ago when I started embarking on my own kind of self-discovery because I really hadn't up until I remember specifically it was March 2008. I'm literally covered and I don't even know what. I'm still in my pajamas and like the Rolling Stones t-shirt, um, which is perfect because that's all about like community and audience and all that. So that's actually perfect that I have this on. Um, what I was saying though is about, um, shit, where was I going? Um, talking about community, but then I was going somewhere else with that and I just literally lost my train of thought. Anyone have that happen. That happens, right? Um, so I'll just go back to the community part. Um, oh, I know. In March of 2008, when I started working on, on myself, I was really curious about like getting certified to be a life coach. And those of you that don't know me, I'm not certified. I've done a million different certifications in di like yoga, meditation, a different kind of like Tai Chi kickboxing yoga, which is really cool. Um, you know, I've got my math, I've got my, I almost just thought I don't have my master's, I have my undergrad in um, communications, I was in sales, I've had a few different companies in the health and wellness sector. Um, but when I was thinking that I wanted to get certified to be a life coach, I remember this vividly, I had to, I think it was like eight or 10 areas of my life, I had to rate scale of one to 10. Where was I in those sectors? Y'all, it was bad. It was like a two, three, four. I don't think I got above a four. It was like really, really, really like bleak. Um, and I remember feeling like so shitty and so like, well, okay, now what? And, they, and then, of course, you couldn't coach for this program unless you were an eight or above in all the sectors. And I was like oh, well, that's really far away. And also then you have to like buy their coaching program in order to get you to be an eight to then be able to coach. And you can only, and you have to coach like their program. So it's not certified to just coach in your own capacity. You would be coaching for them. So all of these things didn't really connect with me. And I'm looking back and I'm like, I think that that's really what messed with my head and made me feel like for the last 15 years, like I wasn't, like I had to have my life perfect before I could coach, before I could like really make this a business that supported myself and my family. 
So a huge like, fuck you to that, right? Like I've done a lot and my life is really great and it's not in some parts. And I am not an eight or above in every single area. Specifically, like when it comes to business because I have had a limiting belief and I can't believe I'm sharing this so early on, but I have had an, a very, very real and limiting belief that I cannot have a happy personal life and a happy professional life. And it goes further. I cannot make a lot of money with just my, just my talents. Like I have it that if I make a lot of money, I have to be a sellout because that was how I used to make a lot of money. I was in the pharmaceutical industry. I did not believe in it. No surprise that I, then I started getting into yoga and meditation. Eastern medicine has made a huge impact in my life many, many times. And so has Western medicine. But I knew pretty early on, it was a 10, 12 year career, really in the second year, I knew I shouldn't, it wasn't the right fit for me. And then I didn't feel aligned with the entire industry, with the entire way that it works within our political system. And I won't get into all of that. Um, but I just always felt like a liar. And I made a lot of money. So like I had this belief system that like in order to make a lot of money, like I had to sell out. So I've been working on that, which is how I'm able to be here showing up right now is by um, getting over that limiting belief and being like, what if that's not true? So I always like to offer that. If you, if this resonates, anything that I'm saying, whether it's this limiting belief that you have or some other belief, my favorite way to deal with it is to say, what if I'm wrong? What if that's not true? I know certain people um, will automatically say no. Like you invite them to go somewhere and they're a no. My, my mom kind of does this. And it's really funny because she's really not a no. She's just, that's just the automatic for her. So I'm always like, sit with it and consider what it might feel like if you were a yes. So same thing with that limiting belief, right? I'm like, what if I'm wrong? What if all these years I haven't been really going after my coaching business? What if I was wrong? What if I could get paid for the thing that I'm fucking great at, the thing that I'm like I am best at? What if I could get paid for that? Like, what if I could get paid for that and support my family? but it's bigger than that. What if I could also show my kids that I can get paid to do the thing that I'm best at and they could see that they could too. So here we are. Now, I did tell you that we were gonna talk about community and I was gonna loop it back to yesterday's video and I will. Um, so Pete the Cat, he obviously was cheering on the itsy bitsy spider, as you know. Um, that is the difference that community makes. So you remember in the story earlier, he was like trying to climb up the water spout. Spoiler alert, he keeps falling down the water spout, falling down the water spout. And then he keeps trying again and he doesn't make it until his friends are cheering him on. So what happened when Derek and I got married? He wanted to get married and he wanted to have kids. I really did not care to get married and I really did not care about the kids. I wanted a dog and I wanted to travel. Um, I wanted somebody to travel with. So a month after we got married, I remember pacing our living room and he came home from work and I was like, we should probably get an annulment or divorced, whatever you want to do. I told you that I could have kids and I might be able to one day, but if I have to do that right now, I will die. I just knew I could not do it. And what's really was really hard about that is that like we had like the perfect setup. He made plenty of money. I didn't need to work. I could raise a child. We had a beautiful home. It had a pool. It had all the things. It was around the corner from a free Montessori elementary school. Like it was just idyllic. And I knew it would kill me. Like I knew that inside I would die. And he would go to work all day long and I would be home with a child that I wasn't really ready for and I would be resentful. Um, and that's really hard to admit. I am not one of those women who always wanted to have children. 
I'm still on the fence, by the way, I have two. <laughs> they're wonderful, but there are many moments every day that I'm like, what did I do? And then they look at you and you're like, okay, yeah, I would do this all over again, right? But it's a roller coaster. It's a fucking roller coaster. So he was like, yeah, yeah, I knew that. I knew that, um, that you weren't sure. And I married you. So let's just table that and have a great life. So we did. And I said, so the thing is, not only do I not want to have kids, I would like for you to quit your job because I actually don't think that you love your career as much as you say you do. I just don't buy it because again, I'm really good at what I do and I can smell bullshit. And I just smelt it all over him where he was like, I love my job. I love my job. And I was like, I just don't think so. Derek used to be an accountant before he started doing um, building and remodeling houses. And I was like, I just don't believe it. And sure enough, some stuff happened with his company. And within a few months, he realized he really did hate it. And he really didn't want to be an accountant. He just loved the culture of the company. And that culture was now gone. So I said, what I really want to do is you leave your job and we go travel around the world. And he was like, yeah, I mean, everybody wants to do that. And I was like, right, but what if we could? And at the time, we were doing a lot of um, classes in landmark education, which was how I know that everything started for me. For me, it's a three-day class, and it was like group therapy, on crack. It's amazing. I highly recommend it. It's called the Landmark Forum. I did it. I've done all their programs, and then left New York, and then moved to Houston, and then Derek and I did all their classes together. So then I redid everything again. So I've spent a lot of time doing a lot of classes um, which is why I feel very, very capable and um, and certified, right, to coach people. Um, if that, I mean, whatever that means, right? I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm a therapist, but I'm fucking great at coaching people. So um, we go and we're in this class and we're in the big one. It's called the Introduction Leaders Program, ILP, for people that know Landmark. Um, and it's 11 months it is labor intensive. You are there all the time and it helps you confront all of your shit. So there we are in this class and it's like, I don't know, maybe like 30 or 50, maybe, I think it's about 30. It's about 30 people. And um, we've hired a financial planner at this point because we're like, okay, we're going to like Dave Ramsey ourselves out of credit card debt onto a budget, like all the things. And then months later, we tell our financial planner, oh, by the way, um, Derek's going to quit his career. I had a company at the time and was going to stop doing that, um, which I'll have to tell you about later. That was super fun. Um, and Derek's going to quit his job and we're going to go travel around the world. This guy almost fell out of his chair. He, like Mark Pickle, I love this guy so much. He has nine kids. Like this was not the kind of life that he would have ever chosen. And he thought we were joking, I think. And he was like, yeah, I just don't see it. Like, Derek, you're going to be so bored, like not working. And I was like, I don't think you know Derek very well. He's so good at not working, which we found out later. He's actually very good at not working. Um, and the point of all of this, because I am going to land it, I'm going to try to keep us to, to 15 minutes, is that we had this huge dream. We wanted to travel around the world. We were lining everything up. We got ourselves out of credit card debt. We started saving massively. And we, we had this guy, Mark Pickle, who was telling, and I can send, I can put his information um, in the comments if you'd like. He's fantastic. I recommend him. Um, and we didn't tell anybody. And that's really important because I knew that if we told the wrong people who did not see this as a good move for us or a reality that they would have chosen or at all confronting because people have their own stuff show up when you do really big, scary um, things that they might want to, but they're too afraid to, they'll poke holes in your dream. So we didn't tell anybody. I shouldn't say that. We didn't tell a lot of people. Like we didn't really tell our families very much. Um, but we told our landmark community because our landmark community was like the itsy bitsy spider. It's Callie, Gus, and Pete. Those are the three characters in the book because I read it a lot, um, that were cheering on the itsy bitsy spider. So we told people, we, I remember we, we shared about it like on stage in front of a lot of people, like 30 maybe, but it may have been a weekend where there was like a hundred people, I don't know. 
And I swear to God, we got a standing ovation. People were clapping. People were cheering us on. Every week, people were like, hey, how's that dream going? How's it going to put your house on the market and sell everything and go travel the world and da-da-da-da-da? And it's because of that community cheering us on that I'm certain we were able to do it. So I say that because... I have been in like private therapy and while that's really, really great, there's something about being in a group. There's something about being in community that is far more powerful than anything I've ever experienced in a one-on-one -on -one situation, which is also why I really only coach to groups because you're going to hear a story that somebody else says and you'll see yourself in that. And I don't always know as a coach, how, like to pull that out of you. I, it's called blind spots. Right? Like you know what you know and you know what you don't know. You know you know how to tie your shoes, probably. You know that you don't know how to be uh how to fly a plane, most people. Um, or brain surgery. They don't know how to do perform brain surgery. But what they don't know that they don't know is where all the good stuff lives, right? Like you don't know why you have a great marriage but you can't make any money. Because that for me had been a blind spot that like I couldn't see that I think it's either or. And it wasn't until I was journaling my morning pages or I heard something in my group in, in my group coaching session that I was like, wait a minute, I th think that. I think that I can't have both, that it's one or the other, but not at the same time. So I'm gonna go now sabotage my relationship to go have like a lot of money and a successful career? No, I'm just gonna shift that belief system, right? I'm just gonna build this new muscle called I can have both. So we'll talk more about that later. I love you. Thanks for watching. Go, go, go be in community that are going to support your, what is it? Wild and hairy dreams, wigs. Oh, I can't remember. It was a workshop I taught a long time ago. So I'll have to find that, dredge that back up and maybe we'll go to work on it later. Okay. Bye.